All right, we back. Picked up something special. Um, you can see uh, this is actually uh, a fat chance. Um, yeah, I picked it up off a guy. He listed it and I was able to jump in straight away. And yeah, I ended up picking it, picking it up um, just last night. So super hyped with what I got. The guy was really nice. And yeah, we'll do a little, um, we'll do a little bike check. So yeah, I got started with these Unza grips or Unza bar ends. Um, pretty solid, but yeah, I'm not really a fan of them, but I'll probably take these off. And got these ODI, old ODI grips, pretty cool. Um, kind of like the other Odyssey ones I have, but obviously the rubber is a little bit different. They also cut short. And then got these uh, Dior XT thumb shifters. Um, this one has SIS. Um, this one doesn't, but yeah, I don't know. Probably, so basically, you can either run them indexed or friction. Um, but yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty stiff. So I uh, so I can smooth them out a bit. Some tall levers. These old school ones. All working. Um, got these uh, Azonic bars. Classic. Got this kind of cool looking or crazy looking um, Cook Brothers stem. You don't really um, see those too often, Cook Brothers. Um, but yeah, this actually looks like a crank arm. <laughs> One of their crank arms. I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, let's see the headset. You got Suntor XC Pro. And going down here, same with the, um, the brakes, the Suntor XC. Pretty cool looking as well. Um, it's kind of got like a big, a big cylinder. The shape of it's pretty cool. And then going down here with the wheels. So yeah, you got the wilderness trail bikes uh, hubs, and then also these rims. They're on the thinner side, but I'm not sure what they are. I think they're yeah. Matrix or Matrix, um, but yeah, Main USA, and then I can't really read that. Um, but the tires are just uh, Kylian. I don't know. I think the tires got replaced at some point, and I think maybe this wheel set got replaced at one point as well. And then here the graphics. Um, yeah, you can see it's a. A wicked fat chance. I don't really know what model it is, but I can look it up online, see what I can find. But pretty cool. These cranks here, Cook Brothers cranks, classic. You don't really see these much um, as much anymore. As soon as I, I saw these, I was like, a message to do straight away. I didn't even know what um, what bike it was, but as soon as I saw the cranks, I was like, oh, it's gotta be a good bike. So hit them up. And Dior XT front mech. Um, this is actually an older style Dior XT because the newer ones have like a different finish and um, has like a red logo, red XT logo. So yeah, I <laughs> I thought this might have been a fake, but yeah, who's going to be making fake Dior XT front mechs? I don't know how much <laughs> profit they'd make, but. I think it looks legit, all the fonts and stuff. Just an older model. I uh, forgot to do the pedals, but these pedals are um, Suntour pedals. Uh, I don't know what model they are again, but they're pretty cool. Cause I don't know when you flip them, they have pins on this side, which I've never seen before. I don't know if they were originally in there or the guy installed them. Not sure what that sticker is as well. Um, chain rings, um, I think they're Shimano. The you know one's definitely Shimano. Um, I don't know what this outer one is. Maybe it got replaced at some point as well. Um, Dior XT shark fin, classic. And then Dior XT rear mac, short cage, um, cassette. I think it's just probably Shimano set 
and then the rims are matching rims on the back matching hubs so that's pretty cool um, yeah you can see these uh, Suntour brakes XC brakes pretty sick cool cylinder thing there um, tires again those no name brand tires um, the seat post is interesting looks like an old Ringo seat post I'm not sure what it is again and then the saddle freeway gel <laughs> um, but yeah I'm gonna definitely replace that but yeah that's the bike pretty hyped on it um, I think it's super sick I'm going to probably build this as like a um, a daily cruiser just because it has like the top tube it's pretty uh, utilitarian um, I don't know if I'll keep the stem yet um, definitely going to change up the bars and then yeah we'll see see how we go with this one um, but yeah I'm super hyped on it um, these bikes I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a fat chance come up ever um, in the time that I've been looking for bikes so yeah pretty stoked got lucked out on this one and yeah hyped to restore it all right one thing to do just gonna spray it down with this um, just because I've seen some spider webs and stuff on it um, always a good idea I don't know where you guys live but um, in Australia it's good to spray it down So just brushing down the bike, uh, not too much to it. What I find helps is just really getting rid of all the dust and dirt with the nylon brush. Um, everything comes off and makes cleaning a little bit easier when you take all the parts off. Yeah, I don't know what that stuff is, but clean it up. Kind of like tree sap, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's also funny sometimes when you pick up bikes, you have certain... <laughs> things on there I don't know if this is like what a bracelet for a hub and then the same on the back yeah I don't know if that's a style thing or not <laughs> all right here taking the pedals off yeah good tip is to uh, do it while the pedals are still on the bike when the bikes on the ground makes it so you get a little bit more leverage And then yeah, this pedal was a, a little bit harder to take off, so I decided to spray a little bit WD-40 on there. And while that soaked, uh, just taking off the cages. And yeah, WD-40 kind of yeah goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way, and that came off pretty easily. All right, just cutting off the little zip ties for the shark shark fin here. And then here, just taking a, when you're taking the chain off, I just put it into a lower gear and you get a little bit more slack on your chain. It makes it a little bit easier to take off your chain. And I'm still, still using my old uh, chain breaker tool. I still gotta get a new one. Hopefully I can get a new one before I put the bike back together again. And then here, just taking off the rear Mac, uh, taking the cables out. Um, this came off pretty easy, so no, no problems here. And then yeah, just cutting all the cables before I take take it off. Um, I'm not going to save any of these cables because they're a, a bit rusted. Um, and then yeah, cutting them off straight away makes uh, taking everything off real easy. And yeah, don't lose your little candy hanger up there when you're taking off. Um, these candy brakes came off pretty easy as well. Um, all except for this one, it had a little uh, adjustment silver thing and I thought it was going to be hard to take off because it was just stuck on there but just a little turn of uh, with the shifter and it kind of came off straight away it wasn't in the back brake for some reason um, just on the front one which was which I found strange but um, yeah we'll see what that's for when when I put the bike back together 
but yeah, here I was just being real careful just to make sure I don't um, I don't damage it. And taking apart the cockpit, so yeah, taking off the bar ends, these on the bar ends, and then spraying a little bit of WD-40 on these, uh, I, I believe they're ODI grips. These were actually a little bit tough to take off, and usually you can just cut them, but I just want to, just in case if I need them for something else, I save them, I just use WD-40. Um, but yeah, if you spray both ends, it makes it a little bit easier. And then here, just cutting off the cables for the brake. Um, you can also cut the cable for the, the gear as well. Um, and they should make sliding the levers and shift it off easier. And then yeah, basically taking off the bell. The bell was just a, a normal bell, average bell, nothing special about it. And then I did the same with the, with the other side here. Once again, a little bit of WD-40. All right, now just taking off the, the rest of the cables. Yeah, kind of threw those away. And then here taking off the crank. The first problem I noticed was uh, with my crank puller tool, the tool didn't fit for that nut. It was actually um, a size 15. Um, for some reason, it's slightly bigger, but luckily I had um, a, a ratchet socket set. So I had a 15 uh, millimeter socket head um, that I was just about to put in there. You can also see it's a quite of a quite tight fit to get in there. Um, so yes, it has to be pretty precise. And then yeah, I took that off. And then here I was just testing my uh, BB tool to make sure it presses on the square taper, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't fit within the hole. And what I realized was there's a little, <laughs> there's a little washer in there. So yeah, make sure you take that out before you crank on your uh, crank removal tool. Otherwise you're gonna strip your threads completely. Um, and then here, just cleaning out the threads with um, a uh, seal pick that I got from Boot Bike, and yeah, that makes it a little bit easier cleaning out the threads to make sure my bottom bracket tool fit. Use a bit of WD-40 as well. And here, I kind of I took it real slow um, with this one. I also tried a different bottom bracket tool just to make sure it's easy to get the threads in there um, because these cranks are pretty pretty good. And I didn't want to strip the threads. Um, so what I ended up doing was just um, going in a little bit at a time, unwinding it, unwinding it and putting it back in. And then just that slow process ended up working and I was, uh, uh, was able to get the tool all the way in there and then pull out, pull out the crank. And here, same again, remember, yeah, just pull out those washers before you put your tool in, a little bit of WD-40 to clean up the cranks or the threads and yeah your tool should go in there pretty well tighten it a little bit and then uh, yeah crank down on it and it should should come off yeah I also spray a little bit of WD-40 on the inside as well and that helps seep into the square taper and makes taking it off a bit easier um, here just taking the rear wheel off um, so yeah basically most of the stuff's off at this point um, no real problems um, here yeah you can hear it. it sounds terrible so what you can do again is spray a little bit WD-40 in there and um, it makes taking the bolt uh, way better um, yeah with the old bikes WD-40 works a treat sometimes that's all you need and here just taking off the bar using a little uh, Pedro lever there um, again, she had a good bike for saying those, um, but something, use something plastic to wedge in there and just kind of uh, open it a little bit and that will make taking the bars out um, a bit easier. Again, just, you know, don't put tons of pressure. You don't want to snap the stem, um, just enough pressure to loosen it. A little bit of WD-40 on a bolt here, again, help loosen that a little bit. There we go. And then a little 
WD-40 uh, where the, the quill stem is. So yeah, that ended up coming out pretty easily. Um, wasn't too much hassle. You can see the rust on there on the on the stem. And then here, just taking off the front wheel. These are just quick releases, so nothing to it. And then here, uh, this is where <laughs> this is actually where I discovered the seat post wasn't moving, and I was like, ah, oh, crap! I took apart the whole bike, and I didn't even check. Usually, it's the the first thing I do. I, I check if the seat post is uh is loose but yeah for this one it was stuck so I was hoping hopefully I can get get a uh, find a way to undo it um, so what I did was to spray a little WD-40 on here um, I, and then I end up getting some penetrating oil penetrating spray and sprayed on here um, a rust unlock so I sprayed a little bit of inside the top of the seat post and then I turned the seat post upside down and then put a little tube in the, um, the little water mount and then spray inside the seat tube as well and hoping it, it dripped down for a little bit. So I did that and then um, I was just trying to get enough leverage because I don't have a vise, I can't stick in a vise so I ended up standing on it and that uh, <laughs> that uh, ended up loosening it and once it loosened I was like yes I, 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 can, uh, I can take it out now. Um, and yeah it took a little bit of work but eventually um, it popped off so super stoked on that I thought it was going to be um, a way big of a problem than I and than I initially thought uh, but it worked out and here yeah, you can see a spider actually popped out of the, the tube I think it's still alive at this point so yeah again with the trusty spray um, and also spray inside the seat tube as well um, just make sure uh, both the seat tube and the seat post tube um, just to make sure there was nothing in there because um, you never know. You can see also under the seat where I earlier sprayed, I forgot under the seat, um, but in those crevices you can probably imagine spiders being in there, so just give it a, a quick spray. Just, yeah, don't take any chances. <laughs> Rather not. And then here, yeah, the whole frame come apart. Uh, taking this little bracket thing on the seat tube. I think it was just for maybe a reflector or a light or something like that. But this was actually way harder to get off than I thought. I ended up just cutting it off um, because yeah, the, the, the screw was threaded. Um, here just spraying down the, the bike with my soap mix. So soap, dove soap, detergent, a little bit of detergent and just water and you shake it up in the bottle and then just spray it down. And then here using the um, seal pick from boot bike again. I'll put a link in the description, um, but here you can kind of, It's good for scraping areas where your, your towel won't get into um, And I use it for you know around the, the headset around the BB that kind of helps as well But yeah, just kind of wiping it down just getting rid of all the dirt first um, Sometimes you can use WD-40 use a brush if it's really uh, a stubborn uh, a stubborn stain and here just uh, getting rid of this I, I don't even know what it is I think it's a ride or rid looks like Ridley's um, decal I'm not sure what that is maybe it's an old brand or maybe it's just a, a person's name who owned it um, but yet yeah, usually I think it's easier if you use a hairdryer to blow on it, but I ended up just using WD-40 and a um, and a razor blade. Uh, it's just a blunt razor blade, so you just kind of peel it from the edge, and that came off. And then here, just with the sticker protection underneath the shark fin as well, um, that came off, but all the residue was on there. So once again, WD-40 got rid of that. Yeah, so taking apart the headset. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of an issue here. Um, it was just like super, super tight to take off. And I ended up having to use a shifter um, because I wanted to apply more pressure on it. The shifter helped me um, undo it. I did put WD-40 here to try to loosen it, but it was still super tough. And you can see my other tool damaged the the nut a little bit so I ended up just um, just doing a couple of touch-ups uh, filing the, the burrs off and then I probably 
paint the little scratches later. Um, and then here, a big issue, I couldn't, I was taking it real slow and I couldn't get this uh, uh, nut or washer off. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but basically some of these rings have a little, a little tap. So this is a good reason to just take things slow because if I just try to unwind this, it would have screwed up all the threading up here. So you can see how this little tab is meant to go in this gap. So what I'm gonna do, try to do is like tap it here. So hopefully it will slide, it will slide in. All right here, yeah, basically just used a razor blade, a blunt razor blade and I just put it on the edge and just tapped it with the hammer. Yeah, and that ended up working. Okay, you see that's done it and it's back in a notch. So it should just unwind out now. All right, so I tried to wind it out, but for some reason it kept being really tight and I just didn't want to like force it. So I want to take a closer look at it. Yeah, so you can see right there, there's still a little ball of metal. You can see that thread is kind of bunched up. So what I'm going to try to do is clean that ball. That this thread here is gone because the washer tried to push against it and then the, that leaves this little ball here which I need to get rid of before I unwind. Otherwise, it's gonna, um, it's gonna screw my threads up. All right, so here I'm just, uh, again, tapping, tapping it with the end of uh, my razor blade, trying to clean up the threads here, hopefully get that metal bit off, and that should hopefully fix it. It's uh, all right, it's a lot cleaner now. I don't know if you can see that, it's just like, threads are clean. All right, so after that, I was basically able to unwind it. Um, all the way, I still took it real slow and just, you know, wind it back and forth, make sure I kept cleaning it out. So yeah, that's pretty funny actually. I didn't expect loose ball rings just to be in there. Um, but yeah, I ended up using a magnet to get all the bearings out. Luckily, I have uh, other bearings that I can replace it with. But yeah, if you're doing this, make sure you do it over, over carpet or something so that you don't lose bearings. My floor actually have some like holes between the tiles. So I'm pretty sure some of the bearings fell down in there. Okay, so I got it out. Yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting loose bearings would be just in there sitting on the top. Um, but I guess he yeah, has an old bike. So anything can happen. Um, but yeah, I'm going to replace those bearings. Luckily, I have, a, I have a pack already. So I'm pretty sure I should have enough. I checked the sizing, it's basically the same. So. Yeah, hopefully I have enough bearings and it works out. All right, everything's off. You can see this is the frame. Looking pretty clean. Still got a T-cut out. I want to give it a good T-cut on this frame. But um, all the decals are off and all the dirt and grime's off. Um, don't know if you can see this side as well. Kind of hard to see in this light. And then the forks are off sweet um, I think this was kind of cool probably cable was there but crazy tan lines and yeah everything's off you can see the stem pedals crank set super cool crank set um, shifters brakes etc bars um, I still got to get off the BB um, but yeah this is uh, this is Imperial, not metric. So a little bit annoying about that. But yeah, pretty stoked everything came off. I was worried about the seat post not coming off, but 
ended up coming off. Uh, I was able to take out the frame as well. So two cut is basically just a, a, a light rubbing compound and it gets rid of the surface scratches. Um, here you can see a little diagram of what is fixable and what's not. Obviously, like my frame, there's some bits where it goes through the primer, but you know, you just kind of put it all over, do what you can, and it ends up looking pretty fresh. So I've been using this product for a while. Um, technically, you're meant to use a polish after it, but I never really found that out till, yeah, just recently. So I might do that in the future as well. And what I find helps is if you work on one tube at a time, um, and that way you'll be able to kind of gauge what you're doing and then uh, gauge the progress as well. But yeah, that's basically it. Uh, don't forget the forks. Well, sometimes I always forget to do the forks and have to go back and redo them, but that's it. All right, here it is, all tea cut, all done. Um, I guess it's a little hard to see because of the lighting. I'm trying to show you, but looking pretty good, I think. Kind of clean it up a lot. Show the other side as well. So yeah, that's basically it, all tea cut. So now I just gotta clean the parts. Basically ready to be built. Um, I still have to BB there, but pretty happy with it. All right, cleaning all the parts. So yeah, basically what I'm doing here is just taking everything apart, getting all the bolts undone. Um, there's a little bit of rust on the bolts, but overall not too bad, but I wanna get everything apart before I give them a, a soak and a wash. And yeah, doing this really helps uh, getting in all the crevices, making sure the dirt is removed and giving it a good clean. And here, taking apart the seat post, um, I had a little bit of an issue here. Seems to be a little bit stuck and I couldn't get the bolt out. So I ended up having to um, just tap it on the end of, uh, end of a hammer. And I put a little bit of WD-40 in there to loosen it up. But it's still a super tight fit, but I was able to hammer it enough to be able to get the bolt out. And what I ended up doing was just hammering it so the holes are even spacing on each side and I just kind of left it as is for now. All right, the next thing I do in the process is just give everything a rinse off, give everything a good wash. So you can see here, I'm just washing all the bolts, trying to get off all the excess dirt in there. Um, just a little soap spray again, uh, it's Dove soap, detergent and water and I just basically just spray all the parts with it as a kind of the first once over. Um, yeah, just to get uh, rid of any of that initial dirt. But yeah, pretty straightforward, you just spray it all, soak it down, you can leave it to soak a little bit. Um, sometimes it takes a, a little bit of a scrubbing, so here I'm just using a nylon brush and just brushing, all, brushing it all over. Um, sometimes giving it a rinse with the, with the water and after I do the once over brush of everything um, you can see seat post as well as well as the shark fin once I do it once over everything then I give it um, give everything a soak so yeah it's filling up the sink here I use uh, just dish washing detergent and warm soapy water and then yeah everything everything goes in um, just make sure you're uh, yeah, your water isn't too hot and you just got to be careful with stickers stickers and stuff make sure um, you don't soak those for too long otherwise they're going to come straight off um, but you can see here same process again just using the nylon brush again giving a good brush brush up um, and yeah this is the reason why I kind of rinse it first because if you're brushing it in the sink wait, when you're soaking it you're going to get a lot of dirt in the water and this kind of helps reduce the dirt in the water yeah, and then when you're draining it, just be real careful about anything going down the drain. So you can see that's why I keep my bolts in a little strainer. And when I let the water out, just make sure there's a sift or something. All right, so everything's pretty clean now. Just gave it a big wash. Um, so what I'm going to do now is drop uh, some stuff in the vapor rust. Um, basically, you can see on here, you know, there's some rust in there. So if I can get rid of that and then some rusted bolts here and there. All right, so I got um, 
these little Tupperware, someone was giving them away, so I just took them. I'm not going to use them for food, so they're great for uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> soaking stuff in a vapor rice just because they're real tall. Um, and here, what I'm sorting out is sorting out all the plastic parts, black plastic parts I don't need to put in the vapor rice, and then all the other bits I can just chuck in this container. And then, yeah, just pouring vapor rice in there. Um, it works pretty well. All right, that's all done. Do that for 24 hours, give it a shake every now and then. All right, just taking this uh, bolt off, almost forgot this. Um, and then this other bolt, just gonna drop it in a little vapor rust container. And there we go. You can see it's pretty rusted. See how that goes. Make sure it's uh, done. So yeah, just taking apart these uh, cranks, um, what you can do is put a little drop of WD-40 on the bolts and that will help loosen it. Um, these came off pretty easily. I think there's some Sugino bolts in there. Um, but yeah, everything came off pretty, pretty simple. Um, I didn't even have to hold the back to take it off and then the chain rings just kind of popped off. Um, the chain rings aren't in the best condition, but I'll run these until I get some new ones. Um, but yeah, I just clean everything up as well. And then here, yeah, same thing again, just soap your water and give it a good wash. Nylon brush again so don't scratch it up. Um, and then here, what I'm going to do is just lay them all out to dry. Um, give them a wipe down with uh, a microfiber cloth. And then yeah, just to get all the water and grime off. And then here, um, yeah, just <laughs> drying each of the bolts off, wiping off the, as much grease as I can. Um, these are pretty clean, so it wasn't too bad. And yeah, cleaning up the rings. Um, here's me pour pouring the vapor rust out. Um, so yeah, these containers end up being really cool because they have a little lip um, and a little tab where you can open it and pour out. But there's a little lip on the end of the container where everything gets stuck, so the liquid kind of comes out and all the bolts stay in. So I'm going to save this vapor rust. I'll strain it and then save it. And then here, um, what you have to do after the vapor rust is basically just wash it off and then you have to protect it again with a uh, WD-40 or you can protect it again with the vapor rust too if you like. But um, yeah, you can see after rinsing it off, sometimes it leaves black film, but you can see how good it works. You can see before it was all rusted on the inner plate of that derailleur there but yeah all the rust is gone now so yeah I've been using this stuff a lot and um, if you can get your hands on it it's pretty good it's pretty expensive up front but you can uh, reuse it and use it on a lot of stuff I've still been using mine for since I bought it um, and then here yeah, just rinsing everything off you can see the little dirt crud bits um, and then here yeah everything looks super clean so I'm gonna give them a spray with WD-40 um, again, if you have like stickers or decals, probably stickers on there, just be careful with WD-40 because it could get rid of the adhesive. Um, but yeah, just give it a shake, make sure it's all covered. And then what I do is just let it um, soak in a little bit before I dry it off. And then yeah, just make sure you get both sides. Um, otherwise, um, it might kind of uh, rust again, flash rust again. But yeah, if you spray it straight away with WD-40, um, it should be fine. And then here, just sorting out the parts, um, all cleaned up, looking pretty good. So yeah, I had all these black bits that I sorted out before, and I gave them a spray with WD-40 as well, just to clear, clear some of the grime off. And then here, <laughs> um, giving everything a last wipe down um, after they've been soaked in WD-40. Um, but yeah, you can see it looks looks really good. This part's really satisfying actually when everything's clean. Um, I'd say washing would be the hard part, but then um, after that, wiping it down and cleaning is pretty easy. And then, yeah, dropping it in the vapor rust is easy as well. So, definitely recommend that. Um, but yeah, here's all the parts, super stoked. Um, I ended up cleaning the chain rings a little bit more, um, but you can see everything's here. It's looking pretty, pretty good. Um, so, that's all kind of ready to be built. Okay, one last thing I had to do was take off the bottom bracket. It took me a while to go to the hardware store and get a set of Imperial 
Allen keys just because this was in Imperial and not metric. Um, but yeah, I finally got around to it and um, end up being able to take these kind of spaces off this bottom bracket. Um, so or originally I thought the bottom bracket was just a, a normal throated bottom bracket, but it's actually a, a press fit bottom bracket. And um, yeah, just getting this taper out, I ended up having to put a little bit of WD-40 in there. It was a little bit gunked up on the inside, but um, it ended up coming out all right. It wasn't too bad. And then um, basically I just looked up. You can get replacement bearings here, these NTN bearings. But yeah, I was going to try to um, get them out first to see if I could do that before I um, order new ones. Um, here just putting a little bit of penetrating oil on the on the edge and what you're meant to do is kind of just tap on the inside um, at kind of like 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and you know 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock um, just tapping all the edges around they said you just lightly tap it all the way around and it should come out so I ended up just yeah t tapping it for a while and then I was, I was thinking like am I going to really be able to order bearings in time so what I decided to do was kind of just uh, yeah just leave them in there and just open them up and repack the grease in there and hopefully it spins a bit better so here you can just use an allen key and take off that rubber seal of course you know new bearings would be better but I'm just going to make the most of what I can with these for now until um, I find a good place to get them from and you can see yeah the bearing uh, the grease in here is kind of dark and uh, and it was kind of yeah it wasn't like super soft so I ended up scooping it out with that um, seal pick that I got from boot bike um, I'll leave that in the link in bio again but uh, yeah that really helped picking out all the old grease and then um, putting the new grease in against the grease gun from boot bike I'll put the link in the description for that as well but yeah just pack that in with new grease and yeah put the seal back on and I gave it a spin felt a little bit better of course it's not going to feel brand new uh, I was originally going to like flush it out but yeah tapping the bearings out seemed to be pretty hard so I just decided to do it this way um, and then here same with the other side the other side the grease was actually red still so I was quite surprised about that it wasn't um, black like the other one um, but either way I just did the same thing again scoop all the grease out as much as I could and then repacked it with new grease and it seemed to spin um, better. And yeah, just gave it a clean, try to wipe as much dirt and grime off as I can. And then the next thing I wanted to do was clean the spindle and these little um, clamps. I don't know what you call them, I guess they're called clamps. <laughs> clamps of some sort, but yeah, basically just WD-40 on the the little grub screws and then um, WD-40 on the uh, spindle. I didn't scrub the spindle with the wire brush just because I didn't want to keep it kind of, um, I didn't want to scratch it. So I just used the wire brush on these little clamp things and then just re-greased the inside. Um, and then yeah, put that together for now. And that's kind of ready to go back into the bottom bracket as well. And then here's just me putting uh, everything back together um, so yeah, a lot of people ask me like there's so many bolts how to remember what goes where. Usually you can just work it out by um, kind of process of elim elimination. Um, you just start off with the bolts that you kind of know and then it ends up working out 99% uh, <laughs> of the time. Um, I think the main thing is just if you, if you find trouble just kind of like look at your footage and see what, how you took it apart. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. it. Everything's ready to go on the bike. Um, I still need to get some handlebars um, and some grips, I think. I might have some old grips I could reuse. But um, I already have a new chain and cables and stuff like that. And yeah, it's going to be the build soon. Alright, just cleaning the wheels now. And yeah, I just use this little pressure sprayer that I got from the hardware store. Works, works pretty well. Um, this has kind of soapy water in there and um, what I do is I use a nylon brush and just scrub around the rim to get rid of all the dirt there wasn't really that much rust on these rims are pretty clean so yeah just basically gave them a, a little bit of spray down and a scrub 
Sometimes you might have to scrub it more than once because the dirt tends to stick on. Um, but yeah, should uh, clean up alright. And here, just clean up the cassette. I use that soapy detergent mix again. And then um, cleaning the hubs. Yeah, just kind of put a towel through and kind of floss it. Um, it's a little bit annoying to do, but once you get the towel in there, it's pretty easy. And yeah, the wheels are looking pretty good. Cleaned up pretty well. Alright, so it's time to put the bike together. I got parts laying everywhere, so I just want to put it together. Um, here, just dropping on the, the seat collar, and I have um, a little grease before I put it on as well. And yeah, just greasing stuff up. Also, on the seat tube, you can see there's a little keyhole for the bolt to go through. Um, I think they did this to reduce weight. Um, have thin tubing, but still make the seat post collar strong enough. So that's kind of why they did that. You never really see that much anymore. And here, just yeah, greasing up the seat post. Um, so it <laughs> doesn't get stuck again. That's pretty solid now. And just clean it up. Here, just putting um, the little, I guess you would call them like rubber washers. So I just greased this inside bit and then just put the rubber on top. And that's just kind of just press fit. I also basically worked out, you know, in which order all the parts go on first before I started greasing stuff up. Otherwise, it can get a little bit tricky. Like this piece, I didn't know if it went in this way or went upside down. So it's good to kind of test everything first before you fully grease it up. And then, yeah, just been using this grease gun tool from Poop Bike. Pretty stoked on this. Um, it's made <laughs> putting grease on real easy. I used to use a syringe with grease filled up and it used to be a little bit messy. And yeah, it's just easy having this. And then, yeah, I. So originally, what I did was I just chucked in all the bearings that was the original size from the headset. And I put it in, and then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just take a look up on Velo Base. And I found the same headset. And for some reason, it specified different size bearings. So I was like, oh, I'll just take these out and put the other size in. That must be the correct size. And <laughs> yeah, it turns out. It turns out it wasn't the right size, but I went through all the work to put in these bigger bearings, and then when I pushed it on, it didn't yeah it didn't fit in there properly. You can see there's a gap, so I, there must be two types of headsets here, um, one with a smaller size bearing and one with a bigger size. So um, yeah, I ended up having to redo it, repack it with grease, and put it in. But yeah, just be careful when you're searching stuff. Sometimes it'll be the same part, but then different uh, different specs um, and then here just doing the same with the top uh, we are putting all these bearings in I ended up just doing it by hand I had a little magnetic spoke tool thing that I used but um, doing it by hand seemed to be easier and grease up the inside of the headset cap chuck that on and then just tighten it by hand for now and then, yeah, I'll probably retighten all this stuff once I get the stem in and get the wheel in and everything. Um, but yeah, just friction tight at the moment. Just make sure it spins all right. And then that's it. That's it for the headset. I also noticed these cool grease guard or grease holes where you can pump in some grease for the headset, So which is pretty cool. If you're um, feeling that's a little bit creaky, you can kind of pump some grease in there on the fly. Um, I don't know how much it works because there's no... There's no exit hole for the other grease, um, but yeah, I kind of just jammed some in there anyway, see if it worked all right. But um, of course, I already packed it all in with grease, so it just makes it super packed. Um, and then here, just putting in the, the stem, greasing that up, make sure that doesn't seize as well. And that dropped in pretty easy. And because the stem the stem kind of goes up really high, so I decided just to, uh, yeah, just have it slammed, which is uh, which looks pretty good. And then the stem, I think maybe it's like 130, and it goes up, goes up pretty high, so it'll be good for a more upright position. Um, so yeah, that's all kind of done. I done most of it inside, and then here I started pulling the bike out outside and then just chucking the wheels on. Usually I build stuff with the stand um, but I wanted to see how the bike looked with the wheels on so I just chucked that on real quick just take a look. 
and then um, yeah, start putting all the different parts on, putting the this uh, uh, bottom bracket spindle in. It's kind of just force fit. I didn't have to tap it too hard, and it went in. And then the reed D as well. Pretty solid here, nice and clean now. And yeah, if you run a smaller cassette, you can use a smaller cage, which is a little lighter and then keeps your chain a little high up as well. Don't forget that little guide for the cables at the bottom. Um, and then he just putting some uh, grease on the tapers. Um, here, yeah, you just I feel like. In the past videos, I probably used more grease than I need to, but you don't really need that much grease, just enough to cover it. And then here, just putting on the the cranks, make sure you chuck that washer back on, and put, put the bolt in. I also greased up the washer, um, because I reckon water could get in there and could uh, just corrode it. So yeah, just tighten it up. Um, so yeah, with the bottom bracket, you got those two little spindles Basically what you do is uh, you just let them look loose, those circular clamps you can see there, you just have them loose for now and then what you do is fit the cranks on and then adjust your chain line and then you tighten up those washers after. So here um, I'm showing you these washers are loose, which is a pretty cool feature, you can just have it loose and you can always adjust your chain line even if you don't get it on straight. But yeah what you want to do is have the middle ring of your chain ring front chain ring aligned with your cassette, the middle cog of your cassette. So you can see it's a little bit yin here and I adjust it so it's more centered. And then yeah you just tighten those uh, fastening washers. And yeah it ended up spinning pretty good. I was pretty pretty surprised about that because I just repacked the grease. Um, here just putting on the front mech and what you want is the top of the uh, top of that metal bit to be one or two mils away from the teeth of your chain ring and make sure you always turn your chain ring all the way around um, to make sure it's uh, it's clearing so you can see this is pretty good all right I had this uh, one test this kind of new tool out um, it's just a drill drill press um, but I had the bell and I want to take off kind of these flakes um, and you can see the first tool was a little bit rough so I ended up putting on this tool and this ended up working pretty well. Um, it still felt a little bit rough because it had these kind of sandpapery cardboard bits in there. And um, yeah, just uh, just uh, <laughs> I end up yeah just ripping these out. Try your own risk, of course. Um, but you can see it's just glued in, and then you can just rip them out with a pair of pliers. I just I'm just showing you one because um, it's pretty boring just to show you all of it but you basically just rip it out pair of pliers you can see I've done the whole thing here um, you can also see I've only I've kept a little bit of the sandpaper in there on the top end just so it wouldn't compromise the glue and yeah check this in and see how it works so yeah make sure you wear goggles sometimes people wear masks as well you can also wear gloves but yeah make sure you definitely wear goggles when you're doing this um, but yeah it turned out really well I was super stoked on this tool um, cleaned up a lot um, I think I'm definitely going to use this for um, parts and stuff uh, once I get uh, get used to it more but yeah just doing the bell was like I was super stoked on this came out real easy you don't have to spend a lot of uh, <laughs> like hand energy you just kind of hold it there and it does the work for you so yeah uh, super stoked on this yeah, so a homie actually gifted me this drill press. So yeah, if you're watching, big thank you. appreciate it. And I'm stoked. All right, so you can see this uh, part of my back seat, um, seat post. And you can see it's pretty corroded, so I'm just buffing it up here. And I realized it wasn't really taking that much of the paint off, so I just decided to use a wire brush and kind of just brush most of it off. And then, yeah, after that, I just buffed it on the wheel again and it turned out pretty good I think yeah my original plan was just to strip off all the paint and repaint it but I kind of just left it like this for now and yeah it looks kind of cool just rough so I'll keep it like that until maybe I'll paint it at a later date and that was ready to go on so yeah basically just 
just screwed it in, um, put this old turbo seat that I had on. Uh, I actually patched one side in a previous video. And here you can see I had to tap that little silver thing a little bit because the threads were really close. So I ended up tapping it back so the threads wouldn't hit the seat post. And then just adjusting the height a little bit to be uh, optimum height. Usually what I do is I start off lower and then I uh, put it up once I have a few rides. Um, but yeah, this seems about right. And then here just putting the bars on. Um, yeah, just being careful not to scratch them because they're black. Uh, yeah, just go slow basically and then just make sure the bends are where you want it to go. <laughs> make sure <laughs> make sure you put the bars in the right way <laughs> as well. Um, yeah, otherwise that's going to be a problem. Um, but yeah, not not too much to it really here. Just put it in, clamp it down. If you have trouble um, putting it in, you can use a little tire lever to kind of wedge open the stem a little bit, make it a little bit of an easier fit. And then just trying to align the, the brakes and the shifters here. I just did it kind of by estimate for now, just to get everything on. And then once I do that, once I have everything on, then I'll go over the bars and just make sure my hands at a comfortable position and then I'll, I'll rotate uh, rotate the brake levers and the shifters to uh, the kind of optimum fit and then uh, cleaning up the brake pads the pivots and yeah just the pads themselves and that's what they look like yeah the machine's pretty good all right I'm just putting on the, the candy brakes here uh, again, I did a little how to, um, but yeah, you can see these Sun Tour brakes are a little bit different. They don't have a little pin, um, they're kind of just like friction base. So, after putting them in, just put the brake pads in loose, kind of just guesstimate it. Um, you can see that there's like a, a metal spacer thing that I just aligned with the top of the brake boss. And that seems to give me enough tension. So in case if anyone has these same brakes, that's kind of how I set it. And then just putting the front uh, front brakes on. Yeah, these, these actually have a little spring pivot. And then for this side, I just put it in the middle. So you can see, yeah, the spring's pretty strong. And then for the other side, it has a little uh, kind of nut or washer where you can turn it to adjust the, the tension on the other side. Yeah, usually you can uh, adjust this nut with uh, the brake still on, but my wrench was, uh, my shifter was too thick. So I had to kind of just adjust it when it was off and then put the brake back on and do that a few times until I got the right tension. But yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a pain, but I got there in the end. All right, just chucking the shark fin on. Zip ties and yeah, the sticker came up a little bit on both ends, so I just end up using a little bit of a PVA wood glue just to get that down. Um, probably unnecessary, but there you go. <laughs> also, I used a hairdryer, put a bit of heat on it to have it sit a little bit flatter. All right, cutting up the cables. Um, yeah, so basically my tip here is just always yeah cut them a little bit longer and you can always trim them down afterwards and then what you want is you want a smooth line uh, for your brake cables and your gear cables make sure there's no tension sharp bends or anything like that make sure you turn the wheel side to side so you got that flex and then here a um, little tip with the derail I just bend it forward before you cut it otherwise your rehose might be a little bit long um, yeah, usually I cut it a little bit longer just in case anyway, you can always trim it down after. And then for the end of the cables, um, you can use a little spoke to kind of clear out the, uh, the housing just to make sure it's nice and clean in there when you go feed the, the cables in. And if it's sharp as well, you can uh, just give it a quick file. And I also put a little drop of uh, chain lube as well um, just to make it slide nice and smooth and then yeah basically just do that for the cables
All right, now that's all done. Um, basically putting the cables in, and yeah, what I like to do is um, just make sure you kind of stretch them out like guitar strings. Um, people often ask me how I do this. You just put your thumb and finger and just stretch them out, pull, pull on it, and yeah, this should get rid of some of the tension um, so that after the first few rides you don't have to readjust your uh, shifters and stuff. You might still have to a little bit but this definitely helps lessen that. So yeah here I'm just feeding in the gear cable but it wasn't going through for some reason so an easy way to kind of fix that is just undo the barrel adjuster just be careful because there's a little spring in there and yeah it should feed through pretty easy after that. And yeah, that's working pretty well. So same with the other side. And then what I like to do is just keep them, uh, keep the tension on the cable while I work on the bike. So to get rid of uh, any other loose tension that might be in the cables. All right, um, I got sent these by Crumbworks. Uh, shout out Crumbworks, and these are Magic Components uh, Dango Bros. This is cable hanger is pretty cool. Um, yeah, cool little sticker inside as well. So, been meaning to chuck this on the build, so I'm gonna chuck it on this one. I think the, the purple and orange are gonna go pretty well. Yeah, so basically on the back, there's kind of two uh, grub screws, and that's how they hang on to the, the brake cable. All right, so just uh, putting it on. Took a little bit of adjusting, but um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. And then did the same thing for the uh, back brake. Yeah, I think the purple looks uh, looks pretty cool. Anodized purple. Um, yeah, I also put them both on upside down. Um, just because, yeah, I don't know, thought that'd be cool. And that's it. And then here just saying the limit screws. Basically, these screws limit how far your derailleur goes on the inside and the outside. Um, yeah, I might do a full tutorial on this later, but for this, this is just a, <laughs> a brief explanation. Yeah, basically you just want your chain to be able to access your higher and lower cogs without it popping off. And then yeah, it's the same thing for the, the rear Mac. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward concept. Yeah, if you want a tutorial, um, yeah, just leave a comment or something. All right, so putting a new chain on, first I'm gonna clean it with this smooth prep. I haven't used this before, so I'm gonna give it a go. Um, some chains might not need it, um, might not need to be cleaned before you put it on, but this one definitely does because it's really sticky. Um, so what I'm going to do is use that citrus cleaner um, to see how it works. Previously I've used uh, soapy, hot soapy water, um, so I'll be able to kind of tell the difference. And here basically it's saying you just put in uh, 25 mil, which is one, uh, one serving. Yeah, you can see the markings on the side there, so it ended up being um, two and a half caps around that lined up, and then yeah, I just gave it a wash. Yeah, so I think it's citrus space because it smells like orange juice, um, but yeah, you can see all this stuff came off, and then I just flushed it with water, and yeah, it was um, completely non-sticky, so I'm pretty happy with the product, and just gave it a dry. Uh, yeah, previously when I'd used detergent and water, it took like three washes and this just washed it straight away, so pretty stoked on that. Yeah, in the future I would like to um, try it with a, a dirty chain to see how well it works. Um, but for now, yeah, pretty pretty happy with it. And then just put the chain on. Um, yeah, hub sounds pretty good. I think the chain felt like a little bit loose, um, but I tested the gears, threw all the gears, and it seemed seemed pretty fine. Seemed no problem, so I'm just going to run it like this for now. 
Okay, living up the chain with uh, smooth loop. Uh, yeah, it works pretty well. You just basically put it on. I think you let it soak for a little while and should be good. All right, just clean up these pedals. Uh, I just used WD-40. Came out pretty good, I think. So these pedals have a little grease port inside the spindle. You can see there. So what I'm going to try to do is chuck a needle in there and hopefully I can pump out, pump in some grease. Yeah, and I'm just pumping some of the grease in there. Uh, this is has a really thin little nozzle, uh, which will allow me to get the get the grease in there. So yeah, I just did this to both pedals. Um, you can see the needle. I try to aim for the bearings here and then also uh, on the inside. Um, not sure how that actually works. Um, you're meant to pump the old uh, new grease in and the old grease comes out somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I did. I didn't see any old grease come out anywhere, but I felt like I pumped in a decent amount of grease in there, so that's basically it. Yeah, honestly, it was a lot smoother once I pumped the grease in. Um, but yeah, <laughs> still wondering where you know the old grease went. But yeah, that's it for those pedals and just have to chuck those on. Yeah, usually I run um, flat pedals on both sides. These have the little pins, but I might switch them out in the future. I think these are part of the Sun Tour uh, Wilderness Trail Bikes group set. Um, same with the hubs and the headset. So yeah, keep them on for now, see how I go. All right, and then the same for the hubs. There's uh, one of these little pinhole things on each side, a little ball bearing and a pinhole, and you just pump the grease in, and it pushes down on the ball bearing, and then fills it up with grease. Uh, you'll know when it's full because the grease will be coming out the other side, and you just do this for all the grease pots. Okay, the saddle is looking pretty dry, so gonna freshen it up with some moisturizing cream and some sunscreen. Yeah, I've done it in a few of my videos before and it seemed to work out pretty well. Um, not too much to it, you just put it on and let it soak in. And then just yeah, wipe it down with the paper towel after it's soaked in to make sure uh, it's not dirty or there's no residue or anything. Alright, one, uh, one last thing. There's these logos on the handlebars and I didn't really want them on there. So I just used a little bit of black house paint and what you do is use it paper towel and you kind of just dab it on and um, just go thin first you just dab it on and then um, it should kind of blend in to the handlebars because it's matte paint as well but yeah you just kind of just press it in and it won't leave any uh, strokes or anything so yeah basically I think I just did just go light real light on the paint and I did three layers and that seemed to cover it up pretty well um, and once it fully dries you won't notice it at all but yeah I think it, it worked out really well all right that's the final thing here's the final bike
enjoyed this video. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, yeah, bike turned out super sick, I think. Uh, pretty stoked on it. Real fun to ride. I think I'm going to switch up a few things in the future. Big shout out to Crumbworks for sending me the hanger. I think it looks real good. And also Boot Bike for sending me all the tools. I'll leave uh, links in the description for that stuff. Thank you to all my supporters. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks to anyone who ordered a uh, shirt, sticker, stuff like that. And also my Patreon peeps. Appreciate it. Yeah, also shout out to anyone who's ever uh, sent me anything. Uh, yeah, I really like getting surprises in the mail. So thank you for that. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Peace.